Now in this short video, I'm going to be reviewing the Co-op ARD 1.1 all-road bike. What is an all-road bike? Well, an all-road bike is somewhere between a road bike and a gravel bike, which basically means two main things. You're going to have disc brakes, and you're going to have tires that are a little bit bigger than your typical road bike, but a little bit smaller or a lot bit smaller than your typical gravel bike. This bike is made by Co-op, which is an REI brand. REI is a sporting goods store here in the U.S. Now this particular one, the ARD means all road, erd, all road bike 1.1 is the lowest entry, basically the most entry level one or bike that you can get of their series, which includes 1.1, 1.2, maybe 1.3 and four, the top of the line being a carbon fiber frame. This particular frame is a aluminum frame. 6061 aluminum, pretty standard stuff. That's a good material. It's a great material and a great frame, a great material for your frame. We do have some internal cable routing. This is for the rear disc brake coming in right here on the left side of the frame, going out and then popping back out of the frame uh, right under near the bottom bracket area. The other internal routing we have, of course, are the front brakes, which come out from the handlebar down here and into the fork. Then just a few inches later, they pop right back out of the fork and onto the caliper. My personal opinion is I don't really like internal routing. I just don't want to have to work on it, but it does kind of look cool, so. Speaking of the frame, this is a size small, which is just 44 centimeters, which sounds really small, but it's also partly because of the sloping top tube. So the top tube, so the top tube slopes down quite a bit. And if it were more straight, it would be quite a bit, maybe even uh, 10 centimeters, maybe 53 or 50, two or something like that but it is still a size small and and they said the maximum height for a size small should be five foot six now i'm just a bit over five foot seven so i was really concerned when i got this is if it was even going to fit me but to my surprise and my delight it actually does fit me quite well so the head tube angle on this bike is 71.5 degrees. And as you go into the larger size frames, that becomes slightly steeper. I think 72, 72.5, something like that. But this one is 71.5. Another important characteristic of the frame, of course, is how wide of a tire can you fit in it? Now, what you can fit in this, according to the manufacturer's website, is 35 millimeters. 35 is the max. Currently, it's equipped with just 28. The frame color is matte black and they actually have two colors. They have this kind of teal color, teal and matte black color, or you can get the teal, or excuse me, the matte black with the dark blue. And actually, this is a women's specific bike. Now, what I can tell from what's the difference between the women's specific bikes they made and the men's is only two things. Number one is the color, as I showed before, it'll be dark blue and black. And the other thing is the width of the saddle. Now I measured the saddle earlier and it appears to be about 155 millimeters wide, which is a little bit wide. And I can say for me, I'm not so sure that I'm sold on the comfort of it, which makes sense as a man maybe doesn't really fit my anatomy quite right. I've rode about 75 kilometers now and uh, it's not that bad, but I may, end up, I may end up changing the saddle out for another one. Let's move on to the front. Now at the front, the big thing that stands out is Claris. And Claris is basically, if you didn't know, it's the entry level, most low end uh, group set that you can buy for road bikes. Which means in this iteration, you get an eight speed cassette in the back. You can shift to eight speeds. You have two in the front. And it means you have cable pull disc brakes. I don't know if all Claris are meeting those specifications at, you know, at this time, but that, that is what they come with now. So, but they do work perfectly fine. I've yeah, like I said, I've rode them and they, they stop good. They shift beautifully, actually. And I'm so far totally happy with it. Of course, they're not gonna be as good as some of the higher end components. Moving on to the handlebars, we have 44 millimeter wide handlebars. I believe they're 44. On the top, end to end, you are 44 millimeters, excuse me, 44 centimeters. And it, the, they are flared out a bit. So down here, we're looking at about 47 and a half, maybe 48. So it's a slight flare. But uh, I find them quite comfortable, and in fact, compared to the vintage bike uh, bars that I'm used to riding, these actually feel quite wide. They're co-op branded, so they're uh, their own house brand. Moving on to the stem, it's the same story there. It's also co-op branded, and it's a uh, 85 millimeter, if I remember correctly. Seat post is very standard. It's an aluminum seat post. I believe it's uh, 30.4. 
30.4 millimeters. Anyway, I'll put it up on the screen. It's a very standard size. The clamping mechanism, nice and standard, nothing special there. I don't remember if I mentioned it or not, but these are carbon fiber forks. And they come to a through axle type of skewer setup. And I'm not too familiar with this, uh, this particular axle fork setup. So I don't really have much of an opinion on it yet. Like I mentioned before, this is a Claris and this is an eight speed cassette. This is going from 11 to 34, which is decent for most riding for most people considering the front we have a 34, 50. So you have a 34, 34 ratio, one to one ratio for most people, for most riding, especially here in Florida, that's totally suitable. But if you have a lot of steep hills, you're in Georgia, you're in anywhere else with a lot of steep hills, that combination for most entry level you know, riders is probably not going to be enough gear, even for me. And I've been riding a long time. This isn't going to do it when I take a trip to, up to Colorado pretty soon. I'm going to have to put a 40 tooth cassette with the 34 up front to have enough range to actually be able to make it up the mountains and the hills. But if you ride mostly flat, then that should be totally fine and suitable. And it does shift very crisp and very nicely. Going up to the front, it's still Claris uh, crank set. Uh, well, it's a Claris derailleur. I'm not sure what they call the crank set, but it's this one's actually a 165 millimeter crank set, probably just with their small size frame. The pedals I did add on it myself, these are actually some Beach Win uh, clipless mountain bike pedals. But uh, yeah, like I said, you have a 3450, which in my opinion, I don't understand why manufacturers are making 50 tooth uh, front cogs on uh, front chain rings on on entry level bikes, there's no way somebody's gonna need that big of a chain ring. Who's buying this sort of a bike? 42 would be totally fine. 42, 32 would be great, something like that. Or just a mountain bike front chain ring set. Don't know why they still make them like this, but there you go. For most people, for most riding, if you're not gonna go up too much hills, it'll actually be fine though. For the wheels and hubs, they are co-op branded, no name. Um, I'll put the specifications up on the screen, but really not much to say there. They are aluminum, double wall, probably 32 hole. There you go. They're rather heavy, I think, I suspect. Speaking of the weight, this whole bike weighs 10.225 kilograms without the pedals, which is a decent amount of weight. You know, it could be more, it could be less. For an entry level bike, I think it's pretty average or maybe even a little less than average. We'll talk about how the riding characteristics go in a few minutes. One other thing to mention down here is this has standard uh, threaded bottom bracket, which I really like. It's no kind of fancy press fit or anything like that. It's a standard uh, 63 or 68 millimeter probably. I haven't measured it. Uh, bottom bracket threaded. That means you can put on whatever you want very easily. If you want to go one by, you can do that quite easily. I'm short on this bike, which I don't think I'm going to do at least initially. Okay, so I've talked quite a bit about the specifications of the bike. Um, now let me talk a little bit about the riding characteristics and, and what it feels like. And, and then finally, let's speak a little bit about is, if it's a good deal and if it's something that you should think about buying. So <clears throat> now, I don't have a ton of experience on this particular bike, maybe 75 kilometers, a few rides. And uh, so, and I also don't have a ton of experience with, I don't have a ton of experience with different road bikes. I've had a handful of them, but mostly vintage. Now, what I can tell you how I feel on this bike. First of all, the bars feel wide to me. At 44 millimeters compared to the vintage bikes, that actually feels rather wide. The overall bike feels very solid, very substantial. That said, it cruises great. Yeah, once you get pedaling, very quiet, very smooth. I feel like I could ride this bike a long time. I haven't gone off-road yet in, on it, only on the uh, asphalt so far. But <clears throat> one thing I don't particularly love about it and I'm not sure why it is maybe it's the the wheels are a bit heavy or overall bike is a little heavy it doesn't really seem to ask you to go faster if you get up out of the saddle start pedaling it kind of feels like you should just sit back down and cruise <laughs> it's not the fastest bike you can tell that right away secondarily second thing I don't love so much about it again are those disc uh, cable pull disc brakes they work fine especially around here in Florida when I'm not even going that fast I think it's fine we'll see what happens when I go to Colorado I have a feeling I'm gonna feel some hand fatigue because they're just not as smooth or as powerful as the hydraulic disc brakes. Other than that, I do like this sl sl sloping, excuse me, sloping top tube. It leaves tons of space for you to stand over the bike. So even, even somebody smaller than me will have a lot of space. You know, as a matter of fact, let's go ahead and get that measurement because that could be interesting to somebody thinking about getting this bike. You're looking at just 
down, okay, let's, let's just say right here, right at this point, a few inches from the back where you might, or let's say six inches from, let's say right at the end of the nose of the saddle. You're looking at just 27 and a half inches. So that's really a low standover hike. Um, which I like and I'm so I'm like why not have a short standover hike that makes it very comfortable and it, to me it even kind of looks just my personal opinion it looks cool so speaking of looks I mean that's totally subjective do you like the looks or not like I said before this is a women's specific bike but the only thing about it is the color not a dark blue but a teal and I actually really like this teal and black color um, I know you can't probably see it on the camera but actually this is a, a decal for the teal part. So perhaps it'll get worn off, perhaps you might take it off somewhere down the road, but anyway, I think it looks cool. And at first I thought this co-op branding would look kind of ugly because it is kind of boxy and just what is co-op. It doesn't look too bad though. And I like the, the subtle finish. Overall, when I, first, when I first saw it, I wasn't sure about the looks, but now it's grown on me and I, and I really dig the looks. That's all personal preference. So I imagine with some, some, some trickier parts, this bike would look super cool. Okay, so the final part of the video is should you get the bike? All right, like I said before, this bike was made in 2017, 2018, 2019, so I don't think you can buy a new one. You can buy another one they make that's very similarly spec, but it's even more expensive. I think it's around $1,600 or something like this, which is a lot of money to me for what you're getting here. Now, this one was around $1,200 new. Um, to me, that's too much for an eight speed, but maybe that's coming from a mountain biker's mind, but an eight speed with, uh, without hydraulic disc brakes, cable disc brakes, $1,200 seems way too high to me. And in fact, if you go on to Decathlon or even like, I think Specialized, some other manufacturers, I think they make similarly specced bikes for a somewhat less money. Um, so to me, that's too much. But that said, if you can find one used like I did, get an excellent deal, this thing was like brand new. There was just a, there, I'll show it on camera, it's right here. There's just a tiny, I mean, it's not tiny, but there's a chip in the paint. Other than that, this bike looked brand new. The woman who owned it said she didn't really ride it that much. Apparently she got, wasn't into riding so much. So anyway, I paid 170 bucks for this. So if you can get this for 170, even 350, I think you're still getting a really good bike. If you're new or going to think about getting into road biking or you're maybe upgrading from a, some kind of like cheap Walmart bike or something like that, and you think, okay, I'm gonna get a little bit more serious about it, but I don't have a lot of money and I don't know for sure if I'm gonna dig it, this something like this, if you can get it for even $300, you know, with the helmet and a few other accessories, you're in the whole game for under 500 bucks. It's a competent bike. Like you can actually ride this bike and feel feel good about yourself, feel good about the bike, feel confident that you got a quality uh, bike. One thing I should mention, I did look at the sticker on the bottom. This whole, whole frame is made in China, just so you know. It's not a Taiwan, it's a Chinese frame. That said, when you look closely at the, at the welds and the work and the craftsmanship, I, I don't see anything wrong with this frame. Um, it, it looks like a very well put together bike in my opinion. So, so should you buy it? Um, you know, I think if you can get a good price on it, or if you're just not worried about cost, yeah, go for it. Uh, one good thing about it is, is it's quite upgradable. Everything here is very standard. Like I said before, threaded bottom bracket, uh, standard spacing in the, in the rear drops, you know, standard diameters everywhere. Everything here, as far as I can see, is very standard. So if you do want to get a bike like this for a few hundred dollars and you want to upgrade it, you can do that. And that's one good thing about it. So should you get it? Well, that's totally up to you. But I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoyed the review. If you do have any questions, go ahead and put them in the comments. I'll be happy to uh, bring my measuring tape out and check a few things. Anyway, thanks everybody for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.